ranking top tiers. Yeah. Uh, this hand has a cryptic and a stony silence in it, so I think this is a keep. Yeah, and, and lands. Which is pretty important in magic, or so I've heard. Yep. Uh, Dark Star Shores. Shores. It's a into... card I haven't seen in a while. I have no idea what that is. Pithing Needle? That, yeah, that is a Pithing Needle. Pithing Needle naming, I'm going to assume, Jace the Mind Sculptor. Yeah, probably. Jace the Mind Sculptor, Teferi. Something like that. Uh, those are the only names I can think of for this deck. Yeah. Bobble. Uh, probably just slams the Stony Silence. Uh, Patrick representing Negate. Yeah, that's Teferi. I wouldn't be surprised if this deck plays Negate in the board. Yeah, so, it does. I, I remember he, he brought it in. So, by leaving two mana up on turn two, he's definitely representing Negate. So, Brandon, uh, chooses not to play the Stony into it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I, I don't know how I feel about that because that's just giving him more time. Oh, he's playing red in this deck. Okay, sure. I don't know what he's splashing red for. Couldn't tell you. Brandon could also be representing the gate here. Sure, just yeah. Just like leaving up two mana and being like... Uh, Unmoored Ego. Okay. That is not uh, the version of that card I thought someone would play. You know, of all the of all the turn three plays, I did I definitely did not expect crack my polluted delta for steam vents, shock myself, cast unmoored ego. He named Stony Silence. Got it out of his hand. He gets a draw card, but that that damn. is like you got to be feeling bad if you're Brandon right now, right? Yeah, not you, slamming you, it and then getting you it taken chose out of your hand. not to slam your Stony Silence on turn two, and then your opponent. Cast this random card that hoses you and strips it out of your hand. Yeah. I mean, he's going to get to draw a card, and then I'm assuming he's just going to snap cast it right now and go for the beats. There's yeah. No yeah, you have to. Yeah. But th this is, like, a really bad position to be in. Yeah. Uh, he does still have a cryptic command, but he's two lands off of playing that, mm -hmm. and Patrick can easily start playing combo pieces at this point yep. under cryptic command. He chooses not to bring in Snapcaster and a turn. So he doesn't even have a clock in play. Well, no, I think that was the draw from the Unmarred Ego, wasn't it? Nope, I guess not. I mean, it doesn't matter. He could have. But flash. he didn't draw from it. That's the thing. He got out of his hand and he didn't draw a card from it. Um, okay. Second Unmarred Ego. Ego. Sure. Name's still. Uh, rest in peace? Or no, Cryptic. Sure. Just get it out of his hand. Yeah, I mean, that's probably game. Honestly. It's pretty good. Now he's on negates. Yeah. And logic knots as ways to interact with this combo. I mean sure. people were talking about how Unmoored Ego might see play in eternal formats. Why? Why is that I, so much better than all these other ones? I definitely have never seen it in modern until now. Okay, now he chooses to bring in Snapcaster Mage, sure. Like, why Why play that over, like, Lost Legacy or something? Like, I know Lost um, Legacy can't hit artifacts, but... I'm sure there's a version of it out there that does this. You can name basic lands with unnamed ego. Oh, yeah, ego. Lost Legacy can't name lands. So this sure. is, oh, this so is you can relevant. Name, uh, you can name non-basic lands, too. Sure. Yeah. I guess that makes sense. All right. Well, I mean... Uh, Dan, since you're in chat, um, I can name any card. Uh, shouldn't uh, Brandon be drawing off of the Unmoored Ecos because he keeps taking cards out of his hand? Did he? Yeah. Did he draw? Off no, of it, he though? didn't. He didn't draw. All right. Well, Patrick has the sword in play now. Yep. Now he so just needs he's a, got half the combo. Yep. If he just draws Foundry, 
I think he has a third unmoored eagle in his hand. Is he, what is he boarding four of them? I, I don't isn't, know. Yeah, isn't draw one for each card exiled? It definitely. It's not each card exiled. It's each card exiled from hand specifically. Yeah. So it's not just let your opponent draw four when you exile four cards. That'd be pretty bad. Yeah. No. It's if you get them, if you get one out of his hand, you get to draw a card. Or if you get X out of his hand, you get to draw X cards. Mm -hmm. uh, Patrick just casting Mox Opal and passing the turn. Uh, just doesn't have any action in his hand, I guess. Maybe. He's down to 10. I do see a negate in Brandon's hand. What did he say to me? My... Right. Um, that one of the unmoored egos took a stony silence out of his hand, and, and the other one took a cryptic out of his hand. Yeah, so he's sort of drawn two cards. Yeah. Uh, War of Invention for two? Yeah. Negate. And gets negated. Yeah, he has another Unmoored Eagle in his hand. I definitely saw it that time. Uh, Mishra's Bauble. And he has another Whir. He's going to Whir for Thapter Foundry. Do you have an answer? No. Patrick has to tell him to draw. Yeah, uh, if anyone gets the game rules violation here, it's definitely Patrick. I, I mean, not it, this isn't competitive REL, but that's definitely like... A thing. That's definitely enough to, like, give him... A game loss, right? A, a, I don't know about a... I have uh, no well, idea. Especially since he did it twice. I'm not a judge, but, like... Is it? He's done it twice now. I guess because he hasn't been warned yet. So, it would just be a warning then. It looks like Dan's talking to them. I can't tell. It would be a game rules violation. Three gets you a game loss, right? So, does that count as two violations for? No, it's for, one. Because he would, have, if he was warned in between, it would be two. Sure. Okay. Yeah, the last card in his hands. I mean, I, I'm one. still wondering how how a judge would go about fixing this, though, right? You don't. You just. You, you just, can't. You it, just can't. Yeah, yeah. No. You can't reverse that. There's part. no way. It's way too far back. Okay. So he's he's demonstrating that he's gonna. No, he couldn't do it. He was despairing. He was despairing, and then he, in response, sacked it to right, get the first okay. one, and then sacked itself. So he's gonna gain two, right? Yeah. Okay. So he. He makes some tokens. It's yeah. too far now. A game, it's a game rules violation. Gives the player a warning. Sure. That just feels really bad, though, as as Brandon. Especially being on control, where it's like that extra card matters. The yeah. extra two cards matter. Yeah. I believe now Patrick actually has negate in his hand. It's some kind of uh, artifact that's a masterpiece. Uh, unmoored ego and, and negate. So are the meek gives plus one plus two. I right. have no idea. That I sounds right. Because that's what Pendlehaven gives is plus one plus two. Yep. Yeah. So that was an attack for three. I, he's going to cast another one? Yeah. Why not? Do we remember to... Uh, he's fetching a response. He doesn't have cryptic, so I don't know what he's doing with four mana. Blowing up lands? I don't know. Uh, he's going to cast a Snapcaster Mage. Sure. sure, in case he wants to name Snapcaster Mage. Oh, no, he's going to negate it. Oh, okay, sure. Okay. I I mean, I guess. I don't know what he's even going to name at this point. Probably Teferi, even though it's already needled. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, maybe. And if he's playing Jace, name Jace, I guess. Uh, Terminus looks pretty decent here. Yeah. Or D-Sphere. Get a extra copies of D-Sphere out of there. Sure, yeah. Uh, Snapcaster is going to come over for four. Yeah. 
Uh, like that's a two turn clock, and he has colonnades too. Yeah, he has colonnades, and Patrick is gonna have to start holding back these thopters. Like, Brandon might still be able to manage this game. Uh, yeah, just he's just, cast gonna, terminus. he's just gonna cast terminus. I don't know how I feel about that. Uh, because he gets rid of his two turn clock. Well, no, he still has it, right? Because he has colonnade. Yep. Yeah, that's actually fine. Yep. That's fine because that leaves Patrick with sort of the meek, nothing. And it's Patrick's hand is two lands, I think. No, I think the other one's an invention of some type. That's an ensnaring bridge. Oh. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's actually very good here. Yep. Two and lands Brandon's, in Brandon's hand. So he's just got nothing. He, yep. He needs to find another detention sphere. I think that's like the only way he's going to answer this, right? Yep. Detention sphere. Uh, Maybe disenchant out of the board. I know some versions of disenchants. Maybe. Another pithing needle. Needle, probably named Colonnade. Yep. It's going to activate Field of Ruin in case that's being named. Get rid of his red source, even though he has Spire of Industry in play. Sure. I mean, make him pay life for it. He's at eight. Sure, yeah. Might as well. Uh, I still don't know what the red is for. Yeah, I, we haven't seen any red cards. Um. Okay, he ghost quarters him off of the spire too. Oh, sure, that's pretty smart. I guess this is still in response to the. I needle. mean, he still has uh, Mox. He st yeah, he does still have Mox Opal. So you you haven't taken him off red completely. And I mean, if he ever finds any uh, artifact hate, he's definitely killing the bridge. He definitely named Colonnade there, though. Uh, rest in peace was a draw for the turn. I mean, it, it might as well, right? Sure. It it stops him from just randomly drawing uh, Doctor Foundry and then winning. Yeah. He's running out of win cons, though. Who, Brandon? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, nope, you named Jace. Jace. Yeah, that's smart. Okay. Yeah, because Jace actually does something here, right? Colonnade yeah. doesn't until he finds a way to take... Uh, and he yeah. might not even have one. Yeah, he, he draws Teferi, which normally would be able to get rid of that bridge. Yep, but cannot. At the moment, it can't. Until uh, he plays Fracturing The Ghost? red mana could be for EE. Sure. I, I, could, I could see that. Yeah. Um, that's kind of weird. I don't see why you would play a Shockland when you're already playing Spires and Moxes. Right. Yeah, that, that's why I'm not, I'm not really sure, because most of these Mox Opal decks can just EE for whatever they want using Rainbow Lands and Mox Opal. Uh, Serum Visions. Let's see, I think that's two more lands. Yeah. Well, I think it was a land something else. Yeah, he doesn't like either of them. Uh, Relic? They both bring in Graveyard 8? <laughs> he probably just cycles that. Yeah. He needs to find some way to close out the game. I, I would just do it now, but... Brandon almost definitely has some way to interact with these artifacts in his deck somewhere. Yeah, I'm assuming he has more than one Detention Sphere. Yeah. Okay, now he cycles the relic. I don't see why would you tap the mox up for that. I mean, why, does why? It, oh, he has a second one. Oh, sure. sure. I guess that makes sense then. I was gonna say because if you do draw something like EE, -E, you don't want to right like yeah. take yourself off of a color if you need it. E is not that good here though. No, I don't think so. Teferi, oh, or uh, I almost said Teferi. That is Tesseret. Five minutes Tesseret from M nineteen. Uh, that, if you can't deal with it, it's going to all and win definitely, the game. That can end the game on its own. You can just attach a sword to that, the Thopter. Oh, that. yeah. Just make it. I like how he's using different Thopters. I mean, technically they, they, they are, are different Thopters. Yeah. One's blue and one's colorless. Yeah, I was going to say, they are technically different. That definitely matters. Change the battery pack.
Interesting. Um, Field of Ruins. Random. <laughs> Random land. He just wants to get all the lands out of his deck. Yeah. Whatever his outs are, he needs to get the highest possible percent of drawing to them. Yeah. But I'm, I don't think he's going to be able to come back from this. I don't know. It would have to be like literally this turn. Yeah. I like just draw it off the top, hit the hit the ensnaring bridge, and then start firing up these colonnades. Yep. Logic not, not gonna do it. No. Nope. Would have been nice last turn. Plays to fairy. Plays to fairy for no value. I'm trying to bait him into attacking the Teferi and not him. Yeah. Uh that Teferi does not have loyalty counters. Quick, find the batteries. We found the batteries. We we got it figured out. But thank you for the uh, for the concern. All right, makes a second thopter. I think we're just. Why is he not attaching these swords? I think we just start attaching these swords and bashing in. Isn't it when a one one enters the battlefield? Oh, it's from the graveyard. Yeah. If he's in the graveyard. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah, it doesn't do anything otherwise. Yeah, I forgot. I yeah, I don't see why... Like, why are you leaving up all this mana? For no reason. I mean, to be fair... How is Brandon winning this game at this point, right? Oh, you know why? Uh, because if he attaches the Sword of the Meek... Oh. You've, oh, boy. You've, uh... We've, we've lost our signal. Uh, I'll, I'll talk to him real quick. He killed it. That's impressive. Okay, we're back. I I have no idea what he's doing. How how does this happen? I know this this match was extremely interesting. Oh, yeah, he can block with Colonnade. You're right. You're right. I, I don't know what they're doing out there. Why do they keep fucking with the... It's not even batteries. The camera doesn't use batteries. It's just plugged into an outlet. Okay. So, someone in chat brought up that uh, he can just block with Colonnade. Sure. He, he can't alt to Fairy. To Fairy's uh, pithing needled. Yep. Uh, so, what I was about to say is that um, if Patrick starts equipping these swords uh, and he doesn't have enough cards in his hand, he can't attack with them. Oh, that's true, too. Yeah. Uh, and Snaring okay. Bridge is symmetrical. <laughs> yeah. So, Colonnade's going to block a Thopter. Yeah. I mean, but he's just going to get to make one every turn until he gets to ult uh, Tezzeret? Yeah. Tezzeret ult, probably not beatable. Yeah, because then, like, the first one, you just get the, the combo. I mean, well, you can't, you you can't, can't combo. not through rest in peace, but, I mean, still. Yeah. Tezzeret ultimate will probably be game. Oh, that is what red is for. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. I don't that, remember what that card I mean, is called, but I know it's something uh, really dumb. Giripper Aether Grid. Yeah. That is probably game. Uh, logic, logic not. For a lot. What's Tezzeret's alt? Tezzeret's alt is at the beginning of your end step, search your library for a permanent and put it on the battlefield That is as an emblem. Yep. It is planar bridge every turn for free. Yeah. So Tezzeret's on eight. I believe it's minus nine to alt. And right. uh, that Aether Grid just got countered. Yep. Second Rest in Peace. Not really relevant. Uh, yeah. If he does this and he has a second Aether Grid in his deck, like he just gets that, right? And then just yeah. starts. Yeah, he definitely just gets that. He definitely gets that, or he, he could have a lot of like crazy stuff in his deck. I don't know. I don't see him having a way to deal with uh, like Rest in Pieces. Like, especially more than um, one. It's an artifact. Or no, it's he, a permanent he doesn't answer. need to. He can win through it. Yeah. Uh, Psy? Yeah, that's another one. I didn't think of that card. Yeah, just make a bunch of dudes. Sword count. Or, yep. uh, Thopter Foundry. Thopter Foundry. 
Thopter Foundry, get another Thopter. Uh, shouldn't Sword attach itself to that Thopter? No, it's from the graveyard. We just talked about this. Yeah, this version of Tez was just printed earlier this year. I, f I forget his full name. Uh, Tezzeret Master of Metal? No, 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 that's the, that's the dual deck one. Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. Master Artificer. Thank you. I knew it was Matt. Artifice Master. Artifice Master. Yeah, this is, this is what this card reads. So, uh, he just takes up one more time and then ults and it's probably over. I would just ult him. I don't even think you need to keep him oh, around. He, he, he goes up to 10. He goes up to 10. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, he's, he's just gonna... I'm just gonna get a dude every turn and a thing every turn. Yeah. I don't see why not. It's not like Brandon really Witch has... Witchbane Orb? <laughs> sure. Make you hexproof? Uh, anytime... Logic not for a lot? Sure. Uh, there's a second line on that card, which I didn't realize until recently. Whenever a source would deal damage to you, prevent one of that damage. I believe that's a different card. Nope, that is Witchbane Orb. That, that is Witchbane yep, Orb? Yep, it has you are hexproof and that ability. Oh, okay. Yep, I know it was random, right? I thought it was just you are hexproof. All right, well, Brandon getting buried in value. Uh, he might die to these Thopters before Tezzeret even ults, honestly. I mean, he takes three here. Yeah. His deck is jank. I love it. Um, the Thopter Sword deck has existed for a while, but Sai and Tezzeret are actually like pretty they're, big additions. Yeah, they're very He's just good. not even ulting this Tezzeret. Yeah, I think he might not have another thing to get that's like game-winning. If he has another Aether Grid in his deck, you definitely alt and get it and then end the game. Second and Snaring Bridge, trigger. Yeah. I mean, if he, he might not. And if he just doesn't, then it's like, why alt? I mean, you're not really getting anything. You're not getting cast triggers. Sure. Snapcaster. You That's not doing anything. <laughs> not even blocking. I guess I can block Psy. Yeah. Um... Also worth noting, he's dragged this game out for this long, uh, and he has five minutes left in the round. So, like... Yeah, he's gonna go 1-1-1. One, one, one. I feel like he probably should have conceded a lot earlier. Yeah. doesn't matter regardless. I think once he, like, unmoored Ego twice and then played in Snaring Bridge, I would have just, like, scooped to that. Yeah. Because now he's got five minutes to play another game. And as blue white control, you're probably not winning that game. No. And if he had conceded ten minutes ago, ten, ten minutes ago, you have fifteen minutes to play a game. He could easily win. But instead, he's probably going to draw this out. Yeah. I mean, unless Patrick just has like the nuts and just like. Sword of the Meek into Thopter Boundary and just goes off because Brandon keeps a risky hand because he's rushing. Hmm. Dan says I had them stop so I had like a minute to the game if they need it. Um, I, did, I don't think that's going to make a difference. Yeah, like... I mean, sure, we'll, we'll say they have five minutes starting now, but what does that really change, right? There's no. This is a very slow matchup, and there's no way. Two two one is definitely better than two three. That's true. It might. Yeah, yeah. That's the thing, though. Like two two one is still not prizing, uh, and two three is definitely. Well, not there's prizing. another round. So three two one might. Mm, it might, but I feel like they're going to be a ton of three twos and or, or four twos, four twos. So yeah, I don't know. It depends on what John decides payout is. That's true. I have no idea. <laughs> Give them one extra minute after my timer. Okay. Sure. Sure. They have I, four I, minutes. I mean, yeah. Colonnade. 
I, I don't I don't see any way. I don't see any way this ends in anything other than a draw at this point. Um, Patrick can't have a quick combo kill because Brandon has the rest in peace in hand. Double rest in peace. Yeah. So that that's like the only way this could possibly end quickly. Mm -hmm. And Pissing yeah, needle? so needle naming Jace probably because it comes down quicker. Yep. The, any of his win cons, it actually doesn't matter. To ferry again, sure. Yep, the rest in peace comes down, and his hand is. I don't think he has it. So, oh, he has the he has the the foundry. He has I don't the foundry. I don't know how he's ever taking that rest in peace off the table. I don't know. Cycles illumination. I don't think he has the sword anyway. So. He passes. Yeah. It that kind of feels bad if he does have the sword. He's gonna shock himself. Cast Mox Opal. No, nope, that's not a Mox Opal. Oh, is that a Mox Opal? Yeah, it's a Mox Opal. Oh, fuck. I always get those stupid masterpieces mixed up. Graft Digger's Cage. I guess. They're both bringing in, like, so such graveyard hate. It's so weird. Like, it's, it makes sense against the Opter combo, but... Why is Graft Digger's Cage going to the graveyard now? He's oh, yeah, yeah. He, he sacked it for Thopter Foundry, sure. Yeah. Gotta get them beats in. Yep, he's at 19. Bad beats. Yeah, last game was definitely bad beats. Uh, second Thopter Foundry. Does not do anything. Makes a Thopter. Empty Snapcaster made it on step. Well, uh, oh, Brandon yeah, seems one. to be winning the race. I mean, sort of. Gonna shock himself to play a watery grave. I I don't know how he's winning. Your left turtle's wrong, apparently. Nineteen to eleven. Interesting. Zach Thopter Foundry makes another Thopter. His clock is slightly faster now. Uh, still not fast enough to beat. Brandon at 19 life. Mm -mm. Uh, any artifact he draw he draws becomes a, another thopter though. Yeah, that is that's pretty good. And uh, he can eventually turn this pithing needle into one if he really wants to. Especially seeing yeah. as Brandon's on two lands. Yeah, you probably you probably do. Yeah, it's just like uh, he's not casting a five mana planeswalker. I would I would definitely end step sack my needle to make another thopter. Okay, so they're not technically in turns yet. Uh, they'll be in turns like a minute from now because we we gave them a minute extension because they were on stream. I got it. Okay. Yeah. He he sacks his. Oh, he's worrying for something. He's probably worrying for sword. Oh, he worries for ensnaring bridge. Okay. So I think he's just on the. I'm gonna make sure this is actually a draw plan. I don't know. He could be like, I'm gonna draw up to one, attack you with thopters, play my thing, so your snapcasters can't attack. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about uh, casting something that shuffles my deck when I'm one minute away from turns, but... <laughs> yeah. Alright. Gets in for two. I mean, he's only down to 15. This is not a very quick clock. Um, he needs to start sacking artifacts to make a quicker clock. That's uh, Aether Grid helps. Brandon has no answer in hand. Uh, I think theoretically, if this game were to play out, and it's turns now. Yep, they just put the die in the middle there. Cool. Yeah, I think theoretically, if this game were to play out to its conclusion, Patrick would win. Uh, Aether Grid plus Thopter Foundry and all these artifacts are more than enough. Mm -hmm. This is turn one. Uh, Snapcasters yeah, can't attack. Do, Correct. All right, it's one to activate Thopter Foundry, right? I think, I believe it's two. Okay. Yeah, I would definitely right here. Probably, I don't know. It's really risky now to to 
pull off Teferi, the Pith Needle on Teferi. How, yeah, how do you make a clock enough big enough to win here? So, so you definitely you definitely sack the needle, I think. Does he have another whir? No, he's using the the aether grid. Oh, he's using the aether grid. It does what one damage? Uh, I believe so. I believe it's tap two artifacts, do a damage. Okay, so he did it. He did that twice. twice. So that adds that adds quite a bit to his clock, actually. What is it? Gearper? Gear? Uh, nope, that's not how you spell it. G H I R. Gearper aether grid. Tap two untapped artifacts, deal one damage. Okay. So, he can basically do four a turn. This is turn two. I still think it's faster to make them Dopters, right? Foundry just costs one. Okay. Yeah, I would have ended turn, like, sack some things to make Dopters. Because they each one is one rather than two is one. Yeah. Uh, the problem with this is... Uh, Brandon has two cryptic commands in hand. Sure. So, every turn, he can just go tap down your team... Uh, draw a card. Yeah. And not lose the game. Uh, no, not necessarily though. With a uh, Gearper thing, he can be like tap down the team. And oh, he just, like, he he did cryptic bounce aether grid. Yeah. Tap down your team. So then he's using he's gonna tap them. Kill to... that. Kill that. Yeah, because putting that in his hand would have made it so Snapcasters can attack. Turn three now. Those stopters are t get to attack? No, right? Because the cryptic tap him down. No. Does he have a second cryptic? It's turn four. He does. All right. Yeah, he's definitely. So dead. there's just no way. Uh, if if Patrick draws negate, I think I think it's probably correct to upkeep cast cryptic. Tap down your team. That way, there's actually no way you can win. Yeah. This turn four. Swing for three, sure, he'll take it. And there's like no follow up that wins here. Yeah, no, just plays either grid. Bounce and draw another cryptic. Or he, he, yeah, he, he countered it. Second foundry, who cares? Go. Turn five. You can't win the game. Not quite. Yeah, I, I think he probably should have converted that needle into a thopter a long time ago. Yeah, uh, being a 10, I don't think it would have really mattered. Maybe it would have, I don't know. I think if, like, he, uh, like, two turns ago, he had two two mana, or he had three mana open because he still had a, a, a Mox Opal. Uh, I think he should have just, like, sacked his whole board and just gone for it. Yeah. Like, just pretty much, like, everything. Maybe even the Ensnaring Bridge at that point because you make, like, four thopters and then you have like I think he was down one more thopter so he would have had six thopters in the air attacking every turn and like maybe that was enough